So you guys, how are you all doing? Today we are doing another video in which I am super passionate about. Because today I'm going to show you guys how to make your very own NAS for pretty much free. If you have any old devices like an old laptop, an old computer that you might want to reuse as a NAS, I will show you today exactly how to do that. Now to accomplish this we are going to be using a software called FreeNAS. It is pretty simple to set up but I will be showing you guys exactly how to do that. Just before we begin let me explain to you what a NAS is just in case you are not aware. A NAS is basically your very own private cloud. So if you guys don't trust the big companies like Google to store your stuff on a cloud for you, you can make your own. It is a network attached storage, meaning it can run the Samba protocol, which means all your files on Windows will show up just like they would on your hard drive. And if you are wired to the internet, your speeds will be exactly the same. It also means you can connect to it using your phone, not an iPhone though, and transfer all your data directly from your phone to your NAS, then to your computer. No cable required. It also means that if you port forward the NAS, you can access it from anywhere around the world. Therefore, it is your own cloud. You can run things like Docker containers, including things like Plex, where you can store all your movies and again, watch them anywhere around the world. You can run things like Minecraft servers, anything you can run on Linux, you can run on FreeNAS using Docker containers. Now, just in case you guys are wondering about the alternatives to FreeNAS, I am actually running my NAS on Unraid. But the thing is, you have to pay for Unraid. FreeNAS is free as said by the name. So that is the one I will be showing you guys how to play around with today because not everybody wants to be paying 50 euro. I paid for Unraid because of its absolutely incredible stylish design. The devs are constantly updating it, constantly working on it. I just absolutely love the layout and it's pretty much flawless from what I can see. So that's why I have that running. Okay, so let's grab some old computer and let me show you guys how to set this up. So just before we actually begin this video, I want to acknowledge something because yesterday in my Gmail, I actually got my first fan art. That was an absolutely incredible feeling. Here it is, it's going to be showing up on screen right now. So if you are watching this video, I just want to say thank you. That absolutely made my day. It's something I have never experienced before and it just makes me really happy to know that you are enjoying watching the videos enough to draw something for me. So thank you so much. I just want to acknowledge that it made my day and um, yeah. So here we go. For this, I'm going to be using this old Lenovo yoga book. What we are going to do is we're going to throw a hard drive inside really fast and then install FreeNAS on it. So let's do that. Ow, 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 ow. So this is the hard drive we're going to throw in. We're going to throw in a one terabyte hard drive, but this is just for show. So technically you guys, of course, could be throwing in anything you like. And if you're not using a laptop, which technically is not recommended, you could throw in as many hard drives as you like. Cool. So now that that part's done and we have a hard drive installed in the computer we want to be doing this on, let's actually run down to the software. Okay, you guys. So as you can see, this is actually our Amazon storefront. I had this open. I was checking it out. I was building it up for you guys. So if you guys are interested in any of the tech I use in my video, videos, you can buy them right here on the Amazon storefront. This storefront also helps out the channel. So if you guys ever feel like helping out the channel and buying one of these, please buy it through our storefront. And also if you feel like buying anything, there's Amazon affiliate links down below if you guys want to support the channel while buying stuff on Amazon. That's really cool. Let's move on to FreeNAS. So what you guys want to do is you want to search up FreeNAS on Google and of course open up the very first page. Then you want to click the big, big download button and then it's going to ask you to sign up for the newsletter. We're just going to click no thanks, please take me to the download page. So we're going to click download and boom, it's going to download right there. So what you want to do at this point is you want to find yourself a USB stick, two gigabytes or larger because it needs to fit that ISO there, but the ISO is only 748 megs. So it doesn't need to be a large USB stick. I'm going to take this one. Then you are going to need a software called Bellona Etcher. This is actually what we were we are going to use to flash this ISO. So get yourself a copy of Bellona Etcher. Really simple. You just install it like you would a normal software. Select your USB stick in Bellona Etcher, just like I did here. And then by clicking here, select your ISO. Once you have all of that selected, click flash and wait for the magic to happen. It's that simple on the computer side. There isn't really much to it. You just need to flash a USB stick with FreeNAS. So thankfully, a lot of people will actually be able to do this. So now we just wait for that to flash. So guys, what's up? How's life? Oh, really? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good too. Oh, damn, seriously? Also, guys, I didn't do the mug sip in yesterday's videos, and people actually got pretty upset in the comment section. I'm so sorry. I 
I don't know what went through my head. I think I should be executed. I totally forgot. I'm so sorry. So as you guys can see, that is successfully flashed. So I've actually connected an ethernet cable over to my switch over there. Uh, that switch is down in the Amazon storefront. It's a pretty nice cheap switch if you guys are ever interested in a gigabit switch because I recently switched to gigabit and uh, I wasn't gonna pay a fortune for a switch. This one's pretty nice. So I have my ethernet cable. Let's plug it straight into the laptop. Oh, come on. This is kind of a pain. There we go. Let's grab the USB stick that we just created, plug it into the laptop. I'm going to move the cafe mugs out of the way. There's two now. I need to start making a store with these mugs, just with the mugs. What you also want to do at this point is you want to grab a second USB stick, a smaller one. This is the USB stick you will install FreeNAS to, because if you install it directly to the hard drive, like I stupidly did, you can't actually use that hard drive as Samba shares or anything. So what you will want to do is you will want to install FreeNAS to a second USB stick and just leave that USB stick in the laptop forever and just boot from this instead of booting from the hard drive. So you plug in the USB stick we just created and you plug in a secondary one that you will be installing FreeNAS to. Then you just spam F12 or whichever button you use on your laptop to get into the boot menu or your computer and you select the first USB stick that we created. And now we just wait for FreeNAS to boot. Now. Once FreeNAS boots, what you will want to do is you will want to click install slash upgrade. Then here you will want to use the arrow keys to select the your secondary USB stick, just like that. Then press the space bar once you are on the USB stick and that will select it. Press OK. Now it's going to tell you it'll format it. Press OK. Create a root password. Now I'm going to make it very simple because this is just for tutorial purposes. So I'm just going to type root. Now we're going to click boot via UEFI. Unless you have an older laptop or computer, then you might want to select boot to BIOS. Because this is legacy mode, this is UEFI mode. I have actually swapped out the USB stick for a larger one, so I have instead plugged in a 32 gigabyte USB stick because it was telling me that the 8 gigabyte one was too small. But as you can see right now, it is installing on the 32 gigabyte. So this is absolutely perfect. As you can see, it's now telling you that it has been successful. You can press the space bar, scroll down, click reboot system, unplug the first USB stick that we created. This is the installer USB. That one can now be unplugged and all you have to leave connected is the USB stick with FreeNAS on it. Now your laptop should boot straight to that USB stick with FreeNAS. So I'm actually back in the boot menu just to make sure 100% that it does in fact boot from that USB. So I'm just gonna select it right there. EFI USB device, SanDisk right there. Click enter and boom, look at that. We are now booting straight into FreeNAS and as you can see, it doesn't say FreeNAS installer anymore. It just says boot FreeNAS. So now we just wait for FreeNAS to finish booting. So guys, once you see this, you know you are successful. This is exactly what you want to see. Down here, you will get your IP address right here. 192.168.2.16 is mine. Yours will be different. So now you can totally just grab your laptop and discard it anywhere you feel like it because we will not be needing this anymore. So you can just place this anywhere, just make sure to leave that USB stick plugged in. And now let's move on to the actual setup. So now you guys are actually ready for the setup. So this is going to be pretty simple. Uh, once you're actually booted and you have that IP address, here is what you need to do. You need to open up a web browser on, well, any other computer, type in that IP address that you just received, this was mine. As you can see, you are straight into FreeNAS. So type in root, which is the login details, and then whichever password you chose during setup. So I chose root, so I'm gonna put that in. Boom, look at that. Oh my God, that dashboard is actually really sexy. That actually looks kind of more sexy than uh, Unrated, to be completely honest with you. Okay, so guys, I'm going to show you the very, very simple setup here. I'm not going to show you how to install Plex or any of the other Docker plugins, etc. As you can see, you have virtual machines there to the left. That's where you can work on all your Docker, etc. But I'm just going to show you how to set up Samba shares because I believe that is the most important thing to have to set up at the beginning. And then if you guys want a future video on this, I can show you how to set up the virtual machines and things like that. So what you want to do is you want to go into storage. You want to go into pools over here. You want to click add in the top right. 
create a new pool, select the drive you want to throw into the pool. So I'm going to select this one right here. Then you want to click the arrow to move it to the pool and you want to give the pool a name. I'm just going to call it the mystical, just like that. Then what you want to do is you want to click create and all the contents on the drive will be erased. It warns you click create pool. Of course, you could be adding more drives to the pool than just one drive, but I only have one because it is a laptop. So this is what I'm working with. Now that you have this done, you can go into sharing. You can click Windows Samba share just right here. Click add, go to mount, select the mystical, which is the pool we just created. Give a name to your Samba share. So I'm going to put down the mystical. I'm going to click use this as the home share because I want this to be used as the home share. Click save. It's going to ask you to start the ser Do you want to start the service automatically? I'm going to click enable service. The SMB service has been enabled. Perfect. Just before we can access that Samba share, you actually want to go to accounts, users, and you need to create a user because if you don't have a user, you can't access the Samba share. So you want to click add uh, full name. Uh, you want to give it a password. So I'm going to just give it the password of root once again, and I'm going to confirm that password. Perfect. And you now want to give it directories and permissions. So I'm going to give it full read and write access to the mystical right here, and I'm going to give it all the permissions and I'm going to click save. Of course, you could click on mount and give it full access to just the entire mount partition, which so now you access your Windows File Explorer, you do two backslashes, you type in your IP address and boom. Now you sign in using that account we just created. Remember credentials or if you don't want to remember them, sure. And now you can access the home share and you can transfer any data directly to this home share, just like you would on a Windows partition. Very simple, very cool, very fast. So here you go. That's pretty much it. Again, I may I might make a video showcasing all the other features and how to properly set this up in the future. If you guys want it, comment down in the comment section below. But for now, this is FreeNAS set up. It is fully up and running. And uh, I hope this video helped you guys out. If you guys liked it, make sure to give it a like. If you disliked it, dislike it, but tell me why in the comment section below. If you guys wanna be notified of future videos coming up daily, I upload tech videos daily and VR videos on Mondays and Fridays. So if you are not yet subscribed, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead. Follow me on my social media here and here. Join us on Discord, join us on Reddit, and see you again in the next one. Peace.